Yes, I know the Vento isn't a new launch and it's been around like forever. But Volkswagen has made sure that it's constantly updated the car over the years. But is that enough to take on the more newer and current competition? Well, we answer that question by telling you five things that work for the Vento and two things that don't. Before we get to the details, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the Carwale channel. The Vento is the only car in its segment. Oh wait, there's the Skoda Rapid too. But then essentially, both are the same cars under the hood. Now coming back to the Vento, it's the only car in its segment that offers a dual-clutch gearbox in both petrol and diesel variants. What that brings to the table is lightning-fast gear shifts when you're in the mood for it, or very good fuel efficiency during commutes. The gearbox also brings out the best in the engines, especially this 1.5 diesel which we're driving here, and it's a brilliant performer. The Vento is essentially a commuter sedan, and one of the most important factors while considering one is fuel efficiency. Thanks to the 1.5-litre diesel engine and that brilliant DSG gearbox, this car returns some excellent mileage figures. This Vento in town returns 14 kilometres per litre and on the highways, the figure goes up to an impressive 18.7 kilometres per litre. Now those are some really good figures. Now we at Carwale had conducted a massive infotainment test that included a bunch of cars and you can read that article on carwale.com. The Vento is the bronze in that test, and that says a lot. The 7-inch screen has got great visibility, all the connectivity options like Bluetooth, AUX, and the likes of CarPlay and Android Auto. That apart, it also sounds the best in its segment, which makes it a great choice for audiophiles. The Vento has always been known for its well-composed nature. At high speeds, it feels very confident with no unnecessary vertical movements and this goes a long way in enhancing the overall comfort levels. Even though this is an old platform, the chassis has immaculate poise along with predictable manners. The Vento's interior scores high on practicality. You get an xl size glove box that can also hold coins and cards. You get a center armrest too that has its own storage. There are door pockets on the front and at the rear, along with two cup holders in the front and a single one at the back if you are the chauffeur-driven kind. There is also a nifty bag hook on the B-pillar. The 1.5-litre engine is quite peppy, but has its fair share of diesel clatter. And the noise is immediately apparent in case of a downshift or when driven in sport mode where the rev counter is given more freedom. At sedate cruising speeds, there isn't much to complain, but when driven a little hard or during overtakes, the noise can get a tad annoying. The Vento has been around for almost 10 years now. And although it has aged gracefully, its dated lines are now beginning to show, especially in the company of newer competition. On the outside, the Vento has largely remained unchanged and standing next to, say, the new Hyundai Verna or the Honda City, the Vento feels a generation or two behind. Even on the insides, the dash design is just too basic and uninspiring compared to the more stylish and modern competition. So is the Vento good enough compared to the current competition? Well, I would give that a yes. It's been updated, it drives well despite being around for so many years. Sure, it's uh, not the most silent performer or the most spacious, but if you consider the positives, the Vento should definitely be in your list of options.